The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Hello, this is my brother, my brother, me, and advice show for the Modern Era. I'm here in the middle of his brother, Travis McRae. This is Justin Griffin. Sorry to rush, boys, but we don't have time to, excuse my language, fart around. We need to get down oh to business. Gosh. It's not going to happen, Trav. Not going to happen. We, we are a month, a month into 20 Funny, and I don't know that there's any more laughter or love happening out there than normal. I think maybe even marginally less. I, I'm... This is a weird vibe to put down. I know you've been out for out the game for a little bit. I know uh-huh. you've been um, doing doing the baby stuff. Not a lot of sleep, I'd guess. Not yeah. a lot of sleep, but Justin and I like to take it it's fucking slow, baby. Yeah, it's yeah. a it's a building game. You can't checkmate on day twenty seventh. You can't checkmate on the twenty seventh move of the chess game. No one's I'm, ever done it. And I'm pretty sure, Justin, just, and I know that you've actually learned about chess and I haven't, but if you check me on any move, I think it's just the last move of the game. Yeah, they think. usually stop there. <laughs> There's not a bonus round for more points. Um, it's not like checkmate. Now let's see where this goes. I filled my life accidentally. My life was filled with laughter and love this week, and I'd like to highlight it. Um, Sydney and I were on a road trip, our first road trip away from the children. Uh, this week and was uh, it intentional or act like accidental like kevin kevin no it was a regular non-humble situation uh we stopped at a gas station in the middle of zilcho ohio <laughs> just no nowheresville ohio and uh we went in the gas station and we got some snacks and the lady at the counter said these are buy one get one free and that made us have to get a lot more snacks than we wanted but they were buy one get one free so we're not gonna leave some freebies behind, and uh, the fella in in uh, coveralls behind us uh, announces, "If Bernie Sanders wins, those will all be free." Huh? And I said, "Huh?" That's <laughs> an said, interesting energy with which delivered to that statement. He said, "If Bernie Sanders wins, those will all be free." Was he saying it in like a? Won't that be totally fucking rad? I love free well, snacks, kind of Sid- way. Sydney said, "Actually, that sounds." Without missing a beat. Actually, that sounds pretty good because of all the free snacks. And he said, it's not. It's scary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen. This is not an endorsement one way or the other, but I'm pretty sure any candidate saying like, and hey, free snacks. And hey, who here likes combos? Right? No one's going to be like, I don't like your free snack policies. If Bernie Sanders wins, all those snacks are free. Like, that, yeah, okay. That, uh, sir, I can tell by your whole steez, you don't think that sounds chill. But if you break down the words, I don't think you could put accents on any of them in a way that makes it not sound extremely good and chill. Right. These colors don't run unless those Pringles are free 99, in which case I'm fucking out of here, man. <laughs> no way. Yeah, so that was that was filled my life with laughter that day. I just want to let you guys know. So I went to the mall and started handing out little paper bags of potpourri that I had made. Uh, uh-huh. Dried out my own sort of apple slices. Dried those the fuck out, and I yeah. put some thyme and that sounds gross. <sighs> oh my god! It's just apple and thyme. Listen, Griffin, I'm glad you filled your life with love. No, Justin, it's gross. You no, filled your life with love. You know, I have a recipe. If you start with um, grapes and thyme, do you know what you get when you mix grapes and thyme? What? Raisins. That's filled my life with laughter and love. Thank you, Justin. I, you can't hear it, but I'm laughing really fucking hard <laughs> at that. I, boys, step aside. Okay. I have an idea that's going to turn this whole year around. I feel I like to- I have felt like you've had an idea, Trav, and yeah. that's why you've sort of been handling this intro the way you have. Listen, I'm kind of the idea man around here, and everyone knows that, and everyone agrees I'm super good at it. I think that you've got a fucking 
huge load of Mabim Bam goops. I've got all my energy been, is backed up. You've been saving up, and you need to just sort of clean the barrel a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I need to discharge some of my goof juice. Right. Get get it. Get it. Justin and I are going to go leave, and you do your dirty thing, and then we'll come back when you're done. This is my pitch. The 20 funny challenge. Everybody loves those viral challenges. The ice bucket challenge. The other ones. The bottle flip challenge. Planking. The Planking. Planking. That one where you eat a spoonful of cinnamon. Laying down in the middle of the road to prove to your coach that you mean business. Yes. Mm-hmm. All of these. Eat so, a whole basketball. Yes. I have two ideas. One I think definitely has legs, but one has potential. I'm going to start with that one, and it's this. You do you want to say, do you want to say, do you want to get ahead of this? Do you want to stand right ahead of this and lay down on the road like I did for my coach and say, anything you're about to say, Travis, people are actually going to do and send you a trillion pictures of on, on Tweedo. Okay. Part one is you say, you know, hi, it's, and then you say your name, uh, and I'm doing the 20 funny challenge, fill your life with laughter and love. And then... Uh, part three is you nominate the next person to do the challenge. Right there in the middle, part two, you film yourself watching the entirety of the movie Garfield starring Bill Murray. That could be good. Can it be also Tale of Two Kitties or just the first one? Huh, that's a good... Yeah, I think if you're really committed to 20 Funny Fill Your Life with Laughter and Love, uh, you do that. Sure. So yeah. is it a video of them watching the movie? Yes. It's on their so- face the whole time. Okay, on YouTube for people to find? Is that the idea? Well, I don't want there to be any kind of legal issues with the 20 Funny Challenge, so we can't show the movie. So the movie edit must be muted. Yes. Or else oh, we're yeah, going to get yeah, copyright yeah, strikes. Yeah, so you sure. need to watch Garfield with your ear, With your ear pods in or whatever. So this second one, I think this one's got legs. I think it's got legs. But this one could be the next big viral thing. And it goes a little something like this. You say your name, say, hey, I'm, it would go like this. For, okay, I, I can see from your guys' faces you're not getting the name part. I'll say it like it's me. Hi, I'm Travis McElroy and I'm doing the 20 funny challenge. Fill your life with laughter and love. And then you tell a bad joke, a dad joke. Mine, for example, would be a skeleton walks into a bar and orders a drink and a mop. And then, you say something nice about the person you're nominating to do it next. Like I would say, and I'm nominating my brother Justin. He's always been there for me and he's never let me down. And I love him. No, that's the fucking joke. <laughs> okay, now Griffin, Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? The, but that, that uh, that's a little laughter, but it's not any, there's no Well, you there. took a big diarrhea dump on my homemade potpourri, so now I'm doing mine on yours. Hey, okay, you know what? I'm nominating my older brother Justin, he's always been there for me, and my little brother Griffin. Everyone agrees he makes the best homemade potpourri in town. <laughs> What's the hashtag, baby? Hashtag 20 funny challenge, and it's two zero F U N N Y challenge. How about funny. just, we drop the challenge, that's so many words. Just we hashtag 20 funny. Screen. Hashtag 20 funny. This is good. All right. That's I think that's gonna get it I out. I mean, there I did just everybody. nominate you guys. You could say something you could say something nice about me. You've but I'm not gonna nominate you. That's doesn't make any sense. Okay. Hey everybody, this is Griffin McElroy. This is a 20 funny challenge. Watch how high I can kick. I want to renominate Travis McElroy. He said some dope shit about my potpourri. Didn't do a joke. Well, well, I figured that some people don't like doing jokes. Like my joke, my comedy. You can't change the challenge, Griffin. <laughs> well, but my comedy is more <laughs> observational. The ice bucket challenge wasn't like dump a bucket of ice in your head or get a nice cold drink out well, of it. I know, I know, but my thing's a little bit more observational humor, more <laughs> narrative, confessional. Pratfall. Oh, no, yeah. it wasn't a What's pratfall. I just did a really high kick and then I nominated Travis. And maybe, oh, and he pooped his pants when he kicked too high. Yeah, I can. I could rip a beefer or add in a beefer sound effect in there. So I think it can be like a do a joke or some sort of like you know light stunt. Like I'm, I don't want to see people jumping from rooftop to rooftop. I'm talking about like how how high up can you jump? Maybe you can touch the ceiling with your fingertips. That's cool. Hey, it's Justin McRae do the twenty funny fill your life with laughter and love challenge. Um, a it's horse twenty walks funny into challenge. A, fill your life with laughter and love. Twenty funny challenge. Fill your life with laughter and love. Horse walks into a bar. Bartender says, "Why the long face?" I'm nominating Amy Adams because she brings a lot of sparkle 
to every um, movie she's in. Well, Amy's listening, so you know she's on board. Amy, I'm, I so appreciate you listening. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to begin our advice show now. Uh, Travis was on paternity leave, so I got to pick the questions. So I picked extremely long questions. That's right. We're going on some journeys, and I want you all to come with me. The irony here, folks, just if I may, is as the mm-hmm. regular question uh, corraller, is Justin's the one who's always like, oh, this is a long one. But apparently when Justin's in charge, the, the mice will play. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, the mice are playing. So I don't want you to feel like I need to charge through the whole question. If we need to take some diversions throughout, these questions can sustain. They okay. are powerful, powerful questions. I work at a deli. Okay. And- Let's stop there. So a deli, <laughs> what is that? No, I, I work at a deli. And recently, a woman came in for coleslaw after we had run out. She told me that her favorite part of the coleslaw was the liquid anyway. Huh. And asked if I could put the remaining liquid into a container for her. That's oh boy. risk, baby. <laughs> oh, boy. Challenging. Challenging <laughs> stuff. <laughs> That's our <laughs> extremely challenging. Hey, everybody, this is Griffin McRoy. I, I'm doing the Fill Your Life with Laughter and Love Challenge. 20 <laughs> Funny <laughs> Challenge, <laughs> Fill Your Life <laughs> with Laughter <laughs> and Love. <laughs> I did a whole thing. I did a whole shooter coleslaw juice. I nominate President Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we're going to throw it out anyway. So I didn't put a price sticker on it. <laughs> and I told her to come back for one if the cashier gave her a hard time. I will, I wish they had, because I would love to be like, okay, let me now affix value to Cole's Lodgers. Let me aff- <laughs> get a fixed monetary value to this Cole's Lodgers. Um, apparently, she was able to walk out with no problem because she came back a week later and asked for more Cole's oh, Lodgers. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> This is how great products get started. You know, like this is how top of the muffin to you got got moving. It's just the part that people like, which is apparently the juice. The juice. Well, here's what I'll say. I've never enjoyed the solid matter in the coleslaw particularly much. So maybe the juice is the least bad part of the coleslaw. This time we were not out of coleslaw, but there was only a little bit of cabbage left. I refused to give it to her for free because it was actual coleslaw, and she became upset. She told me that it was barely any cabbage. Mm. <laughs> Wait, consider that it was barely any cabbage, and said she was going to pick the cabbage out anyway. She should not pay for it. Mm. So, so I do want to highlight that this person came in the week before as a coleslaw fan, and then they fucking mainline coleslaw <laughs> juice and realize like I've been wasting my time with all the chewing, chewing, chewing. I need to just get the juice. You it's should the only thing I crave. You should be paying me to pick all this lettuce out. Listen, I'll come and I'll take your juice away. You won't need to worry about where your juice goes thanks to me and my juice removal service. So there was an argument I got into with a customer at Jimmy John's because we used to sell day old bread and you could get it for like a dollar. And somebody came in and wanted to buy a thing of day old bread, but we had sold all the day old bread. So they wanted to just buy regular bread for a dollar since we were out of day old. And I had to explain to them that that is not how it works. And they said, well, how old is that bread? And I think they were trying to negotiate a price based on that bread's (laughs) relative age. Yeah, uh, that's not quite as wild as free coleslaw juice, but it is certainly. We'll put At it up that on the point, is it still coleslaw? Like I don't. So think- here's okay. Wait, uh, uh, don't get ahead of me. I told her no, but the ensuing argument made me think: Should I have charged her the first time? Yes. Should I have just given it to her the second? No. Surely, if there was only one piece of cabbage in the liquid, that isn't coleslaw. Incorrect. But where is the line? What is the exact ratio of liquid to cabbage? At which point the mixture stops being slaw and isn't worth money? Also, I do not know what this woman was doing with the juice, but she said she liked it so much, quote, she could just drink it. And that's from Teresa. Then Teresa, if I may, it sounds like you know exactly what she's doing with it. I know what she's doing with it. Here's the thing. They say... There's no such thing as a free lunch, right? What Uh they don't say is what lunch is to everybody. 
One okay. man, one man's coleslaw leavings is another woman's lunch. And Here's, you've you've given her a free sort of uh, slaw broth lunch. I don't want to get too scientifical here, but there I, he goes. I'm going to tell you guys the issue here, and that is that we are looking at it backwards because it is not the addition of cabbage to juice that makes it coleslaw. It is rather that we must look at it and say that the removal of the cabbage from the juice does not make it no longer coleslaw. Let me explain. You have a bowl of juice. You put one sliver of cabbage in. That is not coleslaw. What have you done? But you start with a bowl of full of cabbage, right? And then slowly take some away. Until all the cabbage is removed, it continues to be coleslaw. Until hey, it is zero cabbage, I would say. It is still hey, coleslaw. What? What is that juice? <laughs> I don't even know what because now I'm thinking about honest. coleslaw is and coleslaw is, you know, the cap. You got to have the cabbage in there, and then you're gonna have mayonnaise. But mayonnaise ain't juice. Nobody's ever looked at mayonnaise and been like, "I'll have some of that fatty, creamy white juice, please." That's not a juice. I guess maybe there's there's probably a little bit of vinegar in there, but not, that's not what the juice is. I think it's just but, water. What is what's happening in there? I think but where's water. the water? Where's the water coming? Nobody's dumping a full fucking Aquafina bottle of water into the, like some cabbage there's and a, mayonnaise and saying, "Now that's law." There's a vinegar element to this. Well, so yeah. I think what you're getting in the juice is vinegar and a little pot of mayonnaise, and then like broke down, like molecules of cabbage, it's the molecules. Right? It's that's what I'm thinking is the molecules. Cabbage and uh, is a very watery vegetable. Yeah, right. The breakdown of that I think is creating the, the water. Softening. God, coleslaw it's a, sucks so bad. It's, it's the like worst a, fucking food. It's like homeopathy. You're just getting like l molecules of lettuce and and it's supposed to help you. Uh, this is a, hey, can I just say Teresa not to, uh I'm not I don't know what else you do at your job, so maybe everything else is so excellent. That's great. But you do work at a business. So next time, if you're wondering if you should charge something, uh, like charge for something that you're giving to a customer, the answer is yes. Yes. Okay, they came in. Narc. They came All in. Right. They wanted a product. You are giving them that product. They're happy with that product. You should charge for that. All right, Travis, my brother's on the side of Big Deli, but I'm a team coleslaw pervert here. Yeah. If people come in with these terrible needs, these terrible desires, the least you could do is support your fellow man and hook him up with as much Fucking coleslaw juice no, as you No, but crave. that's the part they wanted. They're, just, they they just wanted the juice. Justin and I are over here throwing a fucking park bench through the window of that deli. We're going to fucking <laughs> smash capitalism and chug the coleslaw juice, baby. If you give away the juice for the next person, is going to have less coleslaw. And I think that's ideal for everybody. Well, There's less okay. coleslaw for him. That's to get. it. If this person comes in, and again, you say, go find a friend who just likes the cabbage part. And then I will separate the two into two containers. And I will only charge you for one container. Mm. But, but I'm not giving you how Codif codify it is what you're saying. And yes. then every other non pervert that comes in will have to stand there as you look at them straight in their human eyes and say, and how much juice would you like with that slaw? Right. Yeah. Juice it. We juice it to order. Yes. This is this is a bespoke juicing. Uh, that's good. It's not. It's still coleslaw at the end of the day. But do you guys want a Yahoo? I like a nice sure. dry slaw. Ooh. Uh, yes, and I like it 25 feet away from me as the crow flies. A bunch of people sent this one in. Thank you. It's from Yahoo Answers user HockeyPNC1 who asks, Why does the restaurant give me such a small cup when I ask for a water cup? Don't they trust me? <laughs> There's probably some sort of, you know, big capitalist energy answer for this question of just like, they don't want you to drink the water. They want you to drink the Coca-Cola 
Yeah. And so they they want you to run out of water, see, um, you know, Joe Six Packs Coca Cola over there, and oh. say like, "Well, I'm done with the clear beverage. I would like the brown beverage now." You took this a different way than I did, which I assume this was like a fountain drink scenario where I've said I need a cup, and they handed me like a tiny child's cup to get right. a tiny bit of water out of. Can I just say the same nozzle the high C comes out of? Come on. Where's my separate water nozzle? I don't that want is, a little bit of high C in there. That is for sure not a hundred percent water. There is you're gonna get some high C on that. <sighs> um, but they probably do not trust you. Well, yeah. Because why would they've, you? They've probably been hurt a lot before. I know. I don't think this is going on as much anymore. But there was the very terrible. Uh, like YouTube prank going on, sort of the opposite of the fill your life with laughter and love challenge. Uh, where it's people twenty funny challenge where people were ordering <laughs> cups of water at drive throughs and then yeeting it like directly right back into the. <laughs> yeah, baby, fucking yeah, rip that one, rip that one, rip it, loving it. Holy <laughs> shit! Yeah, baby. Oh my god, that's a crisp one, bud. Ooh, that was. Did you open two at once? What was that? <laughs> Double fist it. Fucking yes, baby. Coke diet. Zero, more like Coke Hero. And this one's actually a strawberry guava diet Coke. Shit, oh, that's ho, ho. so gnarly. Okay, so that's not good. It was bad that they did that, so maybe that sort of uh, meant that just mankind could not be trusted with water going through a drive-thru. Um, I do this to my kids. You don't they trust ask your for kids? More I don't trust my kids with a larger cup than I care to clean up with a paper towel. Yes. I have to envision everything I hand to my child upended on the floor, and so I don't give them any... I, it's it's my fault at that point. Yes. If I have to clean up something larger than a very small cup of water, that's on me. But this I'm is a- how I feel every time my daughter sees me drinking something in w- w- an adult-sized cup and says, I would like a drink of that. And then I try to help her, and she says no. And I think, well, there's the rest of my day gone. <laughs> that's my day. I think that all the cups should be smaller. Huh. Mm. I think when I if you go to a if you go to a Applebee's and they give you a smaller water cup, this is not a thing that happens at any chain restaurant. This is only fast food, yes? Yeah. Okay. Well, because at the chain restaurant, they don't want to have to keep sending someone over there as you're taking shots at H two O. That's a that's a good point, Travis. Okay. Well, when I'm at the fast food restaurant, I'm just saying have you seen the size of some of these sodas? They're pretty big. Can I also throw Fucking this out? Here we go. Are you kidding me? I got to hear more about these big sodas. Well, can Griffin go on in the background while I I'm make my so point? I'm so heavy that my car started to drag its front end and flipped upside down. And I like had to drive Fred work upside down. I think that not only should all cuts be smaller, I agree with you, Griffin. I think also, uh, taking a note from the water cooler design, all cups should be conical so that we cannot set them down. You either finish it while you're holding it, or you throw it away. That is, is that- brutalist, des- brutalist office design. <laughs> Are they? S- I've never thought of that. Are they conical so you can't set them down? There's no other reason, Justin. <laughs> it's a literal I- spike. It's an actual spike. That's what just- Hellraiser drinks out of. I just assumed they were cheaper to produce, but there is something about, like, I don't want fucking cups everywhere. Yeah. Here you go. Now you have to throw them you gotta away. Th- you got to finish it and throw it away. Or turn it into a fun bird beak. Or well, a, yeah, you got, or got a, a tiny a dunce cap. Fun hat. A little, a little crown of a bad kingdom. That's pretty good. I'm just saying uh, some of these cups are so big, I fell in one and drowned once. <laughs> I am uh, a law school student living in a pretty okay apartment, and I've been in this apartment since I started law school about a year and a half ago. My landlord has been pretty okay up until now, but he just did something that has blown my mind. I asked him to fix my sink because it was leaking from the bottom, and he said he'd do it during a time when I'd be in class. Past experience told me this is fine, so I let it happen. I come back to my apartment, and the sink is sitting on top of a folded pizza box. Wait, what? It's the... How? Of a folded pizza box. How could that be true? It's fixed, but brothers, I have no idea where this pizza box came from. Wait, did he bring it with him? I haven't eaten pizza in two months. What do I make of this? Wait, that's from Cassie and Albany. Did he fix the sink by putting a pizza box under it? What it sounds like to me, uh huh, is that he fixed the sink 
My pants of water. <laughs> to catch the drippings? I, I'm trying to work through. what. Well, here's what I think might be happening here. Is that the folded pizza box is sort of like underneath the basin. And it's sort of like pushing... It this up. is not how it. This is not what this question means. <laughs> that can't possibly. That can't be it. It's just I don't know how you. Uh, it's the it's leaking. Uh huh. Right. So just squish a, p- a pizza box under there. That's how a kindergartner would fix it. Yeah. This I, is uh, 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 Cassie. If I may, well, uh, there's two words in here that do not go with the rest of the question. You can't say it's sitting on top of a pizza box and. It's fixed. It's fixed. I think it's two is... separate ideas. Okay. I think the landlord ordered a, a hot and ready and treated themselves to it as they did the dirty sink work. And they were embarrassed that they ate a pizza in your house, so rather than put it in your trash can, they folded it up and jammed it under your sink. And in doing so, somehow fix the they link. They didn't fix it. The you're, link. you're going at this with like wild <laughs> LucasArts adventure game logic. Nobody's ever used pizza box on sink. <laughs> but, but Griffin, okay, I come back to my apartment and the sink is sitting on top of a folded pizza box. There's no room for daylight there. The sink is somehow sitting atop a folded pizza box. And then, let me see, next two words, it's fixed. There's just the reason I put it. There's got it. There's one still image in the world that maybe Cassie captured, maybe they didn't, that sh- makes this all go away. There's just one picture that would congeal the entire situation in my mind, and I cannot conceive of it. The sink was too low. So it was leaking. So it leaked. Sinks are very, very particular. How about another question? Well, yeah. um, I have a new segment I would like to try. <gasps> Oh, wow, okay. I was away for some time. And this is, listen, this one's a little more straightforward. There's not a big goof here, but I wanted something everyone could participate in. So I called this segment, Play Along at Home. Oh, hello, didn't see it come in there. I'm about to ask my brothers, Justin and Griffin, some questions. Why don't you play along at home? (laughs) Are you guys ready? You need us for this too. I thought are the listener was kind of taking or? our role. No, you're or? here. No, you guys are gonna try to. I was gonna. The I was gonna follow their lead. No, they play along at home. They don't play first at home. They play. Is along. this like a sparring a fifth grader? Like you're gonna embarrass us? No, 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 no. These are just some very straightforward questions, and it sounds like they're not from the way I said that, but they are very straightforward. Um, Can I ask and- one last question? Is did you are you getting these questions from some sort of um, disreputable website? No, I made these questions up. This is a straightforward, legitimate quiz. In the song "It Wasn't Me," how many times is the phrase "It Wasn't Me" spoken? Huh? Probably an even number, I would guess. That makes sense. I'm gonna say 32 times. Justin, wow, I'm. Uh, I'm actually going to say 18 times. Ooh, Justin is the closest. It's 15 times. Oh, it wasn't an wow. even time because once in one line, uh, the non-shaggy Shh. singer says, how is she supposed to believe it wasn't me? Mm. Oh, it, it, and at one point, Shaggy does say, it was not me. It was not me. If, if and you that check the records. Count. Of the United States states, how many state names have more vowels than consonants. Five. Justin? I'm gonna say eight. Ten. Teen. Eight. Eight. Ten. Alabama, Arizona, Georgia, oh. Hawaii, Idaho, Indiana, Iowa, Louisiana, Maine, and Ohio. Cool. I'm comedy rule of threes. Come on, third one's gonna be super funny. <laughs> How many times altogether did I see the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise in theaters? 14. 12. Justin, you are correct. Woo! I saw the first one, Curse of the Black Pearl, nine times in theaters. <laughs> I saw uh, two, three, and four once in theaters and saw uh, the fifth one on a plane. <laughs> I, hope my, I hope my prize is, is a joke from you. Okay, <laughs> one more. One more question. If you were to stand <laughs> Travis's end to end, how many Travis's would you need to be taller than the Empire State Building? Why is this? It's 
I feel like we're on a fucking car trip right now. <laughs> and I just like <laughs> picked how up. How many Travis? If you stood Travis's end to end, how many Travis's would you It's like you I'm need? reading a highlights zine made be, by Travis. To be taller than the Empire's. I also had a question here about Shakespeare shows, but I edited that one for time. For time. I might throw it in if we have a tie. I would say 220 Travises. Okay, Griffin? I'm gonna say 221 Travises. Oh, it's 250 Travises. Griffin is correct. Eat my ass, Justin. Booyah, rather, you fell in my trap. Not. Thank you, no thank you. Uh, really I'm, uh, I think in this circumstance, yeah, three out of four, Justin was closest. Congratulations, Justin. You won the first of, I'm sure, many play along at home. <laughs> okay, well, that was funny. And now Can we the money zone. No, let's not go to the money <laughs> zone. I think we need to debrief. I'll, See, and I'll cut the, I'll, <laughs> don't worry, Trav. I'll cut the debrief out of the show starting right here. That clap was uh, for me to see when to start cutting it. Well, Griffin, let me explain to you. The, it's fun because Yeah, do it, man. Just explain your whole concept for it because we're not in the show anymore, definitely. So often, the things we do on the show are just for us, and we yeah. have a good time doing them, but are the people at home enjoying it, I thought? And so I thought this sure. time, they could play along at home. Right. So you created... Hold on, sorry. <laughs> I just need to clarify something. Yeah? Your intent with this... <laughs> was a way to help listeners pass the time. Yeah. While they while listen listen to I wanted them to feel like we were opening the door and saying, hey, come on inside and play along at home. You're just to give them a break from the comedy. You wanted to give them like an active, like a coloring. Well, you uh, know how Matt, it's like at, at when you Applebee when you watch like kids TV, right? Every so often, the people on the show will stop what they're doing and turn towards the audience and be like, "Which one's the square?" I thought it would be right. nice if we included a moment like that where somebody would be like, "I helped the brothers figure out how many times Travis saw Pirates of the Caribbean right. franchise oh, in yeah. theaters." We this should be giving the listeners uh, some sort of puzzle. That's right. a good point, because <laughs> not all of them like it. And also, we keep getting calls from the police, like, uh, we got another dead body here. Mm. They laughed too much at the show too <laughs> constantly that they yep. forgot to fucking breathe again. So if you could start adding in a segment, that would be guaranteed uh -huh. <laughs> a time for people By to do design, some- By design, I would say. Guaranteed a time to do some deep, contemplative breathing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, here's the thing, Griffin. We're not supposed to fill our lives with laughter or love. So here's the love part Ooh, of the well, show. Ooh, the love part is that Travis has provided. The love part is that Travis has provided a sort of chill out to yeah, right. right in the middle of our podcast. Listen, it's not all about goof. If it's all goof, it is. It's a fucking comedy show. But it can't all be peaks, Griffin. There's got to be fucking val. Oh, sorry. So you admit you it's a valley. No, but it's like it's a restful time where everyone can play <laughs> along at home. To chill, restful valley like a little hammock, so like they can li play along at home, hanging between two listenable podcast trees. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a chance to play along at home. But it, it's a, but when people laugh at our baller jokes, mm -hmm. that's a that's that is a way of playing along at home. Travis. No, no. Where's the chance for them to yell at the screen like like in uh, Jeopardy or Wheel of Fortune? Right? They, they're laughing along with us, and while we're like everybody loves Raymond, that's great. Everybody loves that. Everybody loves Raymond. But then, where's the point for them to feel superior to you guys? Right, like uh, the RPG. Right. Element, right? Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. Thank you for bringing interactivity to the program. You're Travis, welcome. It's a grand slam. Uh, and with that, we will uh, squire everyone away to the money zone. Uh, we got a new sponsor this week. What? It's a new, a new, yes. So there were new to talk about. It's HoneyBook. It sounds nice, doesn't it? Does sound nice. Is it just a book full of honey? It is a business management tool. Oh. You got in, you started your artisanal donut shop to make artisanal donuts and create new recipes, yes, I'm I assuming. Did. Yep. Uh so Travis, uh part you shouldn't waste a bunch of time doing uh garbage that you don't want to do. And uh HoneyBook helps with that. It helps you automate your busy work. They got uh templates for emails, proposals, brochures, 
invoices. It uh, organizes your uh, communications with your clients, your bookings, contracts, and invoices. It's all in one place. It just makes running a small business that much easier so you don't have to mess around with all the whack, boring stuff Justin, that you don't care about. Hey, Justin, um, yeah? can HoneyBook teach me how to make donuts? Uh, this is a problem. Because I invested, uh, right now, I, I, can I be honest with you guys? I don't mean to freak you out. I invested all of our podcast money into this donut business because I love what donuts. You know that. Right, yeah. Uh, what was the name of it again? Of the donut business? The Holes yeah, to me. Holes to me. Yeah, it, <laughs> right. It was going off of like, it's all holes to me, you know, but like. I thought I, we were going to call it holes on for one more day. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that, that is better. What about holes your horses? Well, that sounds like we're gonna put whole. We're gonna hurt horses, which I I thought we were gonna call it donut on my breakfast. (laughs) (laughs) Oh no! How about donut? Right now, Honeybook. Right now, Honeybook is canceling all their other ads with us. But also, (laughs) right now, Honeybook is offering our listeners fifty percent off when you try Honeybook.com slash my brother. Payment is flexible. This promotion applies whether you pay monthly or annually. Go to tryhoneybook.com slash my brother for 50% off your first year. That's tryhoneybook.com slash my brother. Hey, are you sad because you can't get donut on my breakfast right at home? You wake up and you're just, you're not feeling putting on your big boy pants, but you really want some donut on my breakfast. Uh, well, maybe think about getting up on DoorDash. I don't think they work with Donut on my breakfast uh, because Not it's, yet. Fi- it's fictional. And also, I think that they have standards. Uh, but they do uh, work with over 340,000 restaurants in 3,300 cities to uh, get food delivered to your, your home uh, when you use the DoorDash app. You just pick what you want to eat, and food will be delivered to you wherever you are. Uh, they oh, got my Dorbid- God. You guys, what? even as we're recording this this segment, the orders are flooding in from DoorDash. My business is saved. Hey. Thank you, DoorDash. You know what I like about DoorDash? What? Uh, I, uh, a lot, I'm trying to eat healthier. It's the beginning of the year. I'm sure a lot of people are. Uh, and a lot of times I just don't feel like the extra work it takes to like cook something healthy. Uh, and in those situations, DoorDash is great because you can like order – uh, ahead of time, get something healthy delivered right to you, and you don't have to put in all the work of actually making something. Also, and- not just to your house, because I've been out at bars before, got there and found out like they didn't serve food, and I was starving. I've door dashed to a bar before. What's up? Not, not cool. That's pretty cool stuff. Uh, right now, our listeners can get $5 off their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the promo code MYBROTHER, all one word. That's $5 off your first order when you download the DoorDash app from the App Store and enter promo code MYBROTHER. One last time, promo code my brother for five dollars off your first order from DoorDash. Hey, J. Keith. Hey, Helen. I hear you have a true false quiz you want me to finish. I do. Here we begin. We host a trivia game show podcast on the Max Fun Network called Go Fact Yourself. True. Correct. The show is all about celebrity guests answering trivia questions about things J. Keith enjoys. False. We sometimes don't talk about baseball or cats. Thank God. It's questions about things they enjoy. Next, we bring on surprise experts every episode. True. Correct. Final question. It's just the two of us sitting alone with these guests. False. Correct. We have a live audience at the Angel City Brewery. See? You can hear Go Fact Yourself every first and third Friday of the month. And if you don't listen, you can go fact yourself. True. I want a mud squad. I want to mud squad. I want to read one headline, um, and it's just Chuck E. Cheese parent names David McKillop's CEO. I just think it's weird that Chuck E. Cheese lets his dad pick his dinner. <laughs> I'm Charles F. Cheese, the kingmaker. Uh, so, right. So, okay. So, <laughs> Mr. Peanut died. Yeah, I knew died. it. I fucking knew it. Is this played? Uh, Mr. Peanut died. Saving the lives of Matt Walsh and Wesley Snipes. It's so random. It's so random. It's like, I, I saw it. I saw the news on uh, New York Times front page, uh, big font, top of the headline. And I was like, <laughs> fucking random, dude. I saw the news yeah, and I so thought, random. good. Eat the he rich, thought, you know, with his I monocle, mean, his top hat. 
Well, he's also a nut, so you yeah. could you could chomp down right on him. But like, I it's, just I, it, it's so. Can I say something though? Yeah, is it about how random it is? It's random. We've covered that. Can I say what else? What? It's fucking twisted, dude. Like it that's is their twisted. that's their guy. Like that's their whole guy, and he's been in all the commercials. And they're like, "What are we gonna do for the big game? Let's fucking." Let's kill Mr. Peanut. It ends with a card that says Mr. Peanut 1916 to 2020 because he's 104 years old and he died. Uh-huh. And I just wanted to point out that this is an ad that ran before the Super Bowl. Okay. This press release, one, details exactly what happens in that in prose. The entirety of that. So we didn't see it's, it. They're all in a car. It's the novelization of the commercial, which is right. a new concept. Last year, Mr. Peanut saved friends from snacking disappointment. This year, he's saving lives. The newly released pregame ad shows Mr. Peanut, Matt Walsh, and Wesley Snipes are on a nutty adventure in the Nutmobile where Mr. Peanut is forced to swerve, causing the vehicle to spin out of control. Uh The trio jumps out of the Nutmobile, clinging onto a tree branch as the vehicle crashes down into a deep canyon below. They momentarily find the safety until their combined weight begins to break the branch. In the ultimate act of friendship, Mr. Peanut lets go and sacrifices himself to save his friends from impending doom. Yeah, he does. So, and then it says you can watch the him die <laughs> <laughs> in this video. You can watch him die, and they're going to show that in the pregame, and then the brand's official Super Bowl commercial will air in the third quarter of the game and broadcast Mr. Peanut's funeral. Oh, funny, funny. <laughs> That's going to so be fucking funny. funny. And then, but then, can we just? He is going to smash out of the grave, right? I mean, he's got to smash out of the grave with a, a like I, a new look. Guys, I think he's really fucking dead. I think, I think he's fucking <laughs> toast, dude. I saw him fall down. And I saw the car explode, and I think he's really fucking dead. You guys, there's no getting out of this one. That brand mascot is dead as hell. I don't see the him fa- coming back. I think he's fucking dead as shit. The fact that Mr. Peanut fell a hundred miles into a huge ravine, and Wesley Snipes didn't say, "And me without my jelly." Is probably the the biggest comedy tragedy of this generation, <laughs> yeah. or perhaps any any other. Can I? The, <laughs> can, the, I want to float them in the limit in everyone everyone's mind of uh, logging into Twitter uh, someday in the morning <laughs> and seeing the breaking news that uh, actor comedian Matt Walsh has died, saving us. <laughs> 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 Accident. Well, no, because no, the- it'll be it'll be Mr. Peanut and then uh, then Matt Walsh and then Wesley Snipes will have won the Tontine and he'll get all oh, the money. Okay, see, yes. So it's gonna be a really funny funeral for this beloved Peanut who has lived longer than pretty much anybody on Earth, and then we killed him because that's what we do. Um, I wanted to. Did some you hear cool about his stuff. family at the wake? They got smashed. What does that mean? Like, because they're peanuts. Smashed peanuts, like that great treat. Smashed because they, peanuts. Then they get turned into peanut butter. <laughs> okay, that you're nothing. Air they get smashed whoosh. into peanut butter. Whoosh. Fans who no, hold up, wait. Cool... Travis started to do it in like a Mister Evil impression accent, <laughs> and that's when it was getting good for me. So, Trav again, smashed, but as but as Mister Evil, peanut butter. I love it. Um, Say something else, some... Mister Evil. Justin, shut the fuck up. One million (laughs) dollars. In addition to mourning Mr. Peanut during his funeral, fans have several ways to celebrate his life, including fans who spot the Nutmobile leading up to and on game day will receive a commemorative pin celebrating Mr. Peanut's life. Hey, y'all, I know that motherfucker's dead. If I see the Nutmobile (laughs) driving around, I'm going to freak. Also, if I get a pin and then find out he's not dead... I feel betrayed. like a real asshole. Mr. Peanut enthusiasts can show their family and friends how much the legume meant to Finally. them by, sh- by sharing the black crying monocle and their favorite memory on social using hashtag RE Peanut. I feel like they're not taking this. They're not taking this R. seriously. Peanut. They're like making a big fucking joke out of it. A man has died. Yeah, a man has well, died, and he may be a p- peanut butter man. And but I mean, just because he was a peanut doesn't mean his memory needs to be assaulted. Um. The ad was produced by... Was that another peanut matter. joke? No, sir. Okay, I, who do you wish had died... In that three? In that three. I mean, Fuck, Mary, kill. 
Can I just say though, I am really glad they were filming when the car crash happened. Cause if he had just died, like if he had just died, if he had had a heart attack and just died, and then we see it in the news, they like smell rotten peanut coming from his hotel room or something like five days later, like that would have been sad, but at least they were recording. Yeah, they got, a, they got a commercial out of it. They recorded it when he died and exploded. So now I feel like I get a chance to say goodbye. Um, I so, just want to say that there's no combination of the three of them in which I don't <laughs> end up choosing Mr. Peanut for kill. Yeah. Because the he's and the reason for that is that he doesn't have flesh and bone and blood and Correct. brain and organs and cells and nerves. Um, brand Twitter fucking jizzed all over itself <laughs> trying to get a slice of this one. Everybody's <laughs> tweeting about this this tale. Um, I think the most hypocritical one is um, Snickers, who said we too would sacrifice it all for the nut. Hashtag R.I.P. Nut. And hey, hey, fucking Snickers, you've been burying his brethren for decades in in people's maws. I don't know where you get off being indignant about the loss of one peanut when you've been absolutely murdering them for ages. I think PETA said PETA said that uh, nuts have been a great source of protein for a long time. Whoa. So thank you, Shut Mr. the peanut. fuck up. You can't even. We're trying to have fun over here with this dead ass nut. And you come in here like, well, let me tell you about the body science. So Uno, the brand Uno of the game. Uh huh. You know the game Uno. So that brand replied to the other brand, which is now I will give it up. The Twitter, the Twitter name of Mr. Peanut has changed to the Estate of Mr. Peanut. Yeah, that that does rule. That <laughs> That's extremely good. Prop. Uh, 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 I will give you your proper respect for that. Uno. Uh, replied to the tweet, what? No, we're dropping a reverse card on this. Whoa. Hashtag RIP no. nut. Hey, Uno, can I talk to you over here for a second? Um, it's 2020. If you have had the ability to drop reverse cards <laughs> on events of the world, this is where <laughs> I do not know why you've been on the fucking bench until now. I can't believe this is what gets you in the fucking game, Uno. This is what, you must have just drawn it, I hope, because if you have had this ability this entire time, and this is where you I mean, say, this far, no far. No, listen, guys, we only have enough chrono silk to operate the time loom once. <laughs> So we, uh, and we've been waiting. I think Mr. Peanut's the one we got to burn it on. If you already got the reverse card going, if you could just let it run for a few years, I would love another second, another pass at this. Uh, oh. Very well, very well done, Peanut Company. Can I do a Yahoo? Yes. Yeah, please. It was sent in by Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. It's an anonymous Yahoo answers you, sir. I'm going to call him Mr. Peanut out of respect. Does the washing machine in a home slash apartment share the same water that comes out of the toilet? Now, I think that this person's probably smart enough to know that you don't flush your dirty toilet water down and then it goes back up into the washing machine because I've certainly done both at the same time before and like I know that's not how it works. Right. But I guess I'm confused about <clears throat> what the what the flow direction, like is there one big pipe and this pipe would be called like Griffin's water pipe. And then whenever I turn on washing machine, Griffin's water pipe is like, let's get some water up there. Yes. But then Griffin's downstairs toilet pipe is like same same water. I've or is there pictured- a yucky water pipe and then good healthy boy water pipe? I've always pictured it kind of like a whimsical kind of like pipe organ in a, a Disney cartoon or maybe one of those Disney movies like Mary Poppins or is like mostly live action, but some animated stuff and like the pipe organ would be animated and it's like boop, 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 boop. and some right. of the pipes are nasty water. I love that. Yeah. And there's somebody definitely playing it for each house. Yes. Definitely. Somebody's somebody's got somebody underneath each house. Like there has well, to be some kind of oversight. Right. We oh you you just flush your toilet. Let's get some of the yucky water in there. Don't waste the good boy water on there. Because otherwise, you're telling me that like it's up to a machine, and I don't trust that. I don't trust I, a machine to always know where the nasty water can go and where the good water can go. Right. Exactly. Yeah. No. I. I yeah. Because the computer's going to switch it as like a cyber joke. Because the other option, the other thing that 
I don't know, scientists might try to tell me is that the water in my toilet is the same as the water in my sink. And don't like that. there's no way that's true, scientists. Can't possibly be true. Did you Justin, know? You, Justin's trying to Google the I know Justin's Googling the answer. Like, how does potty water work? Because he wants to be the smart. He always has to be I the smart. I don't know. It's one. just like it's so. I just. You flush it and it goes to the sewer. But how's it like, come I'm, back, Justin? But why is it's it not come, about where it goes. How's it come up? Because it's. It's filling from the same place as your potable water does. Whoa, like all, whoa. You have one. Do you, you don't have a potable and non-potable water source going into your so home. You're telling me. It's just the whoa, one wait, water stop. service. Fuck you. Are you telling me that in my sink is doo-doo water? No, Travis. <laughs> no. In your toilet is sink water. It's all in perspective, But then baby. my toilet, the water that comes up and grabs my poop and takes it away is the <laughs> right. same water that I use to wash my Lexapro down my throat. No, the same water you use to wash your Lexapro down your throat is so fancy that you're also treating your, your dookie. <laughs> that seems like a waste. <laughs> cool. Hey, it's 2020. Let's we're, let's save some time and like money and energy where we can. I don't need fancy water to grab my dukes. I, you want to save money. Our infrastructure is a fucking disgrace. And we're supposed to run new non-potable lines to everyone's okay, homes? All right. Are you okay, crazy? Wait, let's start here. First... New lines to Flint, Michigan. Then, new lines to grab my dookie water. This is what's bugging me out, man. And sometimes we pretend like we don't know things on this show to, like, be funny. And, like, that's why we say sometimes funny stuff like uh, that the, you know, the potty water would get in washing machine. And, like, that's funny. But um, I'm just double checking now. I'm not washing my clothes in poo-poo pee-pee water, right? That's <laughs> right? No, no. I just want to make Wait, sure I haven't yeah, been no, doing it. I, I just want to make sure I haven't been doing it wrong this whole time because I didn't. You know, I've been adulting for a bit now, but no one ever really teached me how. So, uh, just making sure it's not. Uh, I haven't been cleaning my clothes with poo poo pee pee water or brushing my teeth with it. You know, I used to watch those tiny house shows, and the people would sometimes just kind of, let's be honest, shit in a box, and they would say like, "It's it's a compostable toilet," but you're cheating in a box. But now that I'm thinking about the risk of washing my clothes in poo poo pee pee water, and yeah. I think maybe instead I poop in a box. Maybe I poop I in a box? I just think the pipes should be above the ground. Because when they're under the ground, that's where, oh. first of all, the machines can tell it where to go and which yes. one gets put. Yeah. Uh, also, that's or, fun because then you can follow them like they do in Jurassic Park, where there's like follow the red pipe. And you know, the red pipe is the hot water, and the blue pipe is the cold water, and the brown right. pipe is the poo poo pee pee water. Yeah. Um, so embarrassing. What, tra What, Justin, what? It's just so embarrassing. It's like you guys aren't even saying anything. This is embarrassing. I'm embarrassed. I just think that, here's the thing. Electricity, I don't fucking care. How comes electricity and internet and phone wires get to be high up in the sky? Paraded mm -hmm. high up in the sky. Look at us, everybody. We've got electricity in us. You have to look at us. Birds are going to sit on us and poo-poo all over your cars and crosswalks. No matter what, because we're electricity, we get to be up high. And meanwhile, all the water is like we have to live below the earth like s sloppy mole men uh i think we give it a chance to switch them around and we let the water ones be up above where we can keep an eye it's that way we can see the water the the water goes through the wires and no. the internet goes through the pipes the pipes are gonna Come be on. the pipes are gonna be way up high so wait big heavy water pipes up in the sky not up in the sky. That's Griffin's Not pitch. up in the sky, like We're gonna 10 have to, get to 12 feet birds. off the ground. You couldn't and put gonna... little birds on top of that. That would look dumb. I mean, we can get like all kinds of animals up there. Yeah. Um, but they, the pipes will be clean, and there'll be one clean like water pipe, and they'll be going in towards the city, but then there will be the dookie water pipe. Uh, and just uh, maybe we paint that one black so okay. <laughs> we hey, can see into it. I, I might be way off base here, but I'm going to throw some spaghetti at the wall and see if it sticks. Yeah. Uh, clear pipes. Yeah, no, no. So you can see it. That's all. what I'm saying. See it all, and and just throwing this out here too. Three pipes, one for clean potable sink and laundry water, right. one for whatever water we don't need to put a dirty label on it, and then the third one, just you see some salmon swimming in there. Oh, well, that's, that's nice. That's yeah, relaxing. for the animals to get through. How's yeah, the fish supposed to get through the city? Right, fish wants to see shit. But why, how come bird gets to see everything? Fish never gets fish to see nothing. nothing. Yeah. Fish see nothing. Hey, thank you so much for listening to our podcast. We've so enjoyed spending time with you. Uh, thanks for being patient with us in like weird schedules over the past uh, couple months between like 
live uh, shows and travel and holidays and births of children. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your, your understanding. We hope you've enjoyed the programming that has been available to you. Yes. Also, uh, we're going to be performing some live shows here in Cincinnati at the end of February. February 19th, we're going to be doing My Brother, My Brother and Me. And February 20th, we're going to be doing The Adventure Zone. Uh, you can get those tickets by going to McElroy.Family and clicking on Tours. And if you click on uh, Merch, you'll see all the new cool merch we've got there, including my favorite, some new Adventure Zone graduation pins, uh, one for heroes, one for villains, one for sidekicks, and one for henches. I think they're all super cool. Thank you to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song. Uh, uh, holy shit. It's a departure. I, I, I got it confused with the other show that I do that I say the name of the theme song for, and I actually forgot the name of this 500-episode-long podcast theme song. I apologize to everybody, but it's a good song, great album. Go check it out. And also thanks to Maximum Fun for having us on the network. Go to MaximumFun.org. Check out all the great shows there, like uh, Mission to Zix or JV Club with Janet Varney or a bunch more, all at MaximumFun.org. We have other stuff at McRoy.Family, like Travis talked about. So that's going to do it for us. Uh, every week on the show, we have Griffin uh, read a Yahoo answer that we think about and come back next week and discuss. Yep. I, this um, one's uh, sent in by Ivy. Thanks. It's an anonymous Yahoo Answers user. Also, uh, Mr. Peanut rips, rips up, asks, how come if we flew to the moon, nobody ever tried to fly underneath the earth to see what's really down there? Whoa! <laughs> my name's Justin McElroy. I'm McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, and me. Kiss your dad. Square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned, audience supported.